Welcome back, people, to the creation of the Oasis at Modern Design. Here in the next three episodes, you guys are going to see some awesome stuff. I want you to stay tuned as we continue to convert my vinyl siding house into the most amazing water feature experience that I've ever built. We're going to take that reservoir down there to completion and we are going to build the waterfall going down. You're gonna meet the team. There's all kinds of amazing stuff wrapped up in the next three episodes. You guys stay tuned, share it with us. Appreciate you hanging out with the Adams family. So with those, they are very important. So as soon as I get them, I try to get back to them as soon as possible. I email them and if there's a number, I have to call them and let them know that I did send them an email. And then I pay bills. That's all it's going to do. Input stuff. My favorite part, I think, is see the final result because it's pretty nice when it's ready. And we do a lot of things outside, so I don't have to stay in the office all day. This is the guy cutting the stuff. My brother, too. I like him sometimes. This life is good. Yeah, buddy. Third time cracking my sternum. It feels great. Like, the best thing is when you sneeze, it is like, the best feeling ever. I don't even get to be here and do anything. My guy keeps having to go dump it. You're the dumper? Yep. I need to turn it up a little more than that. Thing. Let me know when those are standing real fast. My name's Aaron, and I am a contractor from Miami coming up to help uh, John Adams on his one of his projects. Hey, what's going on? I'm Aaron Dugan, uh, Grafton, New Hampshire. I'm here in Friendsville, Tennessee, uh, knocking out this wicked cool pond for John G. Adams. We're gonna be able to start building a waterfall. It's gonna go all the way around, in like a little horseshoe. Awesome day yesterday. Uh, knocked out this whole um, project behind me. We're getting ready to do falls today. This is the intake bay area. Basically, all the water accumulates here. Uh, it's a huge reservoir. So everything from the whole system is going to end up being here, and then this is where we're gonna draw our water from. So our pumps are gonna be hooked up into this area here, and then, uh, you know, pumped back up to all the different waterfalls, and the main pond and all that stuff. Oh, this part of my house has always been such a disaster. My wife feeds the birds off the back porch out here. I made a flower bed here. Well, basically when we moved, I had all of these stones over here, and they were my favorite stones from the gardens down at the other house. And so anything that was accessible, because I had put all these gorgeous stones that I collected over the years, I just tucked them all. This is the north facing side of my house. And I just tucked all these rocks into this hillside, threw a few plants in that I wanted to keep, like this red dragon maple. I think I've had this tree for probably going on 20 years now, and that's as big as it is. Four feet wide, and it's about thigh high. And uh, this is a Pinocchi cypress, Nanagracillus. Another 20 year old tree that I have. This is stuff that's really hard to acquire when you're doing a water feature. And uh, I don't know, I might have to sacrifice some of this paper patio and do some. This is like the only thing we haven't destroyed anyway, so I might as well tear it up. It's just always been a hard spot over here to maintain because all the bird seed falling from above, it's just constantly covered in weeds. I thought it'd be a whole lot easier if we took these stones, utilize them in that side of the yard since we never hang out over here anyways. And uh, we're just going to smooth all this out, repurpose all the resources over here into the new landscape. And this is going to become grass that I don't have to deal with.
is gonna be hurtful to somebody. But if you double loop strap this guy around the outside so that you've got a strap coming up both sides, you should be able to pick that straight up. Okay. And make it hang vertically. I want it to look like it's growing right up out of the ground. It's in a lifetime tree. I mean, seriously. I told the guy where I buy my driftwood, if you ever get a piece that's just completely over the top, don't show it to anybody else. Just call me, let me know. I'll come down and get it. You got my word, I'll pay your, pay your number, whatever your price is, because you just don't get these. And he called me miraculously, like, I don't know, a month before we were getting ready to start our waterfall project. And he said, I have the nicest piece of wood that I've ever found. You need to come get it. I didn't call anybody else. The boys loaded that thing up. It took them weeks to get there because they had to have an excavator here to unload it. They had to have an empty dump trailer. I mean, that thing coming in in the trailer was just absolutely ridiculous. It made me so happy to see that. And it's like rays of light from above shine upon us. Oh, you're getting ready to build your personal water feature? Let us bring you the best driftwood you've ever seen. This. It's perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. those off so yep. that it's not sitting on them when you get done. Right, right, right. Down, 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 down. Let it sit. Down? Yeah, just let it sit. Okay. It's kind of sexy. Looking at this log, and I'm remembering being on the Colorado project, and it occurs to me as an artist that you can't just be like, hey, I need a, I need a 20 foot long, 3,000 pound aged cedar log. This is the kind of thing that people don't think about is, you know, where do you acquire something like this? When we sell a massive project and it's, people are like, oh, what's the difference between a $150,000 job and a $450,000 job? I'm like, art, it's art. It's how much time you spend. The difference between building this area as quickly as you possibly can make a decent waterfall. And to me, a decent waterfall is probably way different than it is to everybody else, but it's, it's the parts and the pieces that you don't realize. How long and did I, you have this one, John? How long have you had this, this? This log, my buddy Mike Markham called me and this tree was cut down in Friendsville several years ago. And I hired my other friend, Bob Brown, to get his tractor. They went down to the city of Friendsville and loaded this thing on his trailer, brought it back here, left his, you know, went back and got his tractor. It's these things people are like, I want a log. And they're like, oh, well, we'll just whip one up real quick. It literally, we spent three different people, spent a lot of time and energy to acquisition this piece of wood. And then it was set up there on the hill for years before we needed it. Same with the driftwood, I waited for that stump. Literally years I've been waiting for him to call me and say, I found the stump. And it's that kind of thing. Knowing that we were gonna build this job. I mean, you, I just pointed up there and Tristan runs and gets that rock. And I remember the day that I was up on the mountain picking those stones. And every single project that we did over the last two years, every time I went and handpicked rocks for our clients' projects, for our team, so that they had exactly the right stones for what they're building, every time I was like, that one, that one, that one, those are our rocks for our water feature. Put them in that pile over there. And it's kind of concerning to me that we're going to use all of those in half our feature because it took me two years to get that many amazing stones. But it's the little things that don't seem like much that make all the differences that people don't understand. And I mean, I'm looking at those guys getting ready to strap this rock up up here and that thing is like the perfect waterfall stone. It's just got the cut in the side of it. and All of these little pieces coming together and we've, been, we've just been saving them up and saving them up. And it's like, now we're not gonna spend two days and build this reservoir as fast as we can. We're gonna spend however long it takes to just build the coolest thing ever. Let's talk about what they've done over here. I actually miscalculated the height of the aqua blocks and they ended up sticking this high up out of the whole reservoir area. So while I was squirreling around doing stuff yesterday, these guys actually rolled the liner back in and filled the liner level up to level with the block. So I lost about six, eight inches of that height that I had built in. Thank goodness I built it in because that would have been lame. You know, stuff happens. Sometimes you do 5,000 calculations and you mess up one and you just had to figure out how to roll with it. The negative edge basin now holds 8,000 gallons. It gives me freedom to make changes. 
I can add fountains. I can just I can just do whatever I want to do up here with the team. We ended up with about probably an average of eight to 10 inches of aggregate all the way around. When you do the calculations on aggregate, it's about 30% water and 70% stone. The aqua blocks are almost 100% water. That's why we use them. They're easy to clean and they don't displace a lot of your, your fluid. So it gives us more capacity and a smaller footprint. We're gonna spend however much time we wanna spend in this area to build the most amazing waterfall that we can possibly build. And if we don't get done up there in our time frame that we have, then we don't get done. But we're not gonna do production here. We are gonna get this done, make it beautiful, as amazing as we can possibly make it, then we'll move up the hill, start working on the wetland feature. Nothing is to be rushed. We can use all the color changing lights, all the driftwood. This is going to be a phenomenal waterfall, the best waterfall that we've ever built. Nothing less, so stay tuned. Till we finish. Now we're gonna do a little flame searing here. Uh, why we are washing the meat? You gotta wash very it important mid. To wash your meat. You gotta wash it mid, uh, mid grill. Mid grill cycle. Very important. Well, see what happened was the, the charcoal was acting up, so we decided that we should. You know, create a little more horsepower with the turbocharger. Oh no. So we, took, so we took the leaf blower to the grill. Oh no, oh, this is, oh no. Oh yes, oh, yes, this is great, it's good. It's just extra flavor, that's what we call extra flavor. Don't tell anybody. We're about to get fun in here. Okay, whatever you say, no more free workout for somebody. Sighting of the red Nick working. I do stuff. My pockets are full. You done? Yeah. <laughs> pockets are full. Right there it is. Number one. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Watch this. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. <laughs> 